Lauren and I spent four days hiking the beautiful Inca Trail to Machu Picchu, and we experienced many ups. The sun is shining. Seven wonders of the world are done. We made it and the toilet tent's already up. Hallelujah. The guacamole has alpaca chips. And some downs. All right, it's 4 a.m. Setting off in the rain. Never in my life had mosquitoes draw blood on me before. And we want to share our experience so you know what to expect on your next adventure. For those that don't know, the Inca Trail is a 43 kilometer hiking trail that ends at Machu Picchu, an ancient Incan archeological site that is today one of the new seven wonders of the world. The trailhead starts at kilometer 82, which is about 2,720 meters above sea level. And the trail at the highest point is at Dead Woman's Pass, which is 4,200 meters above sea level. It's a Dead Woman's Pass, the highest point on the Inca Trail. Oh yeah. You made it to Dead Woman's Pass, woo! How you feel? <laughs> the trail goes all the way to Machu Picchu and ends at 2,400 meters above sea level. This hike has days that are rated as challenging and some days that are rated as moderately challenging. But basically the trail is constantly changing elevation and you're going to feel like you're always either walking straight uphill. It is straight uphill. Or straight downhill. Honestly, it's the downhill that got me. There's our campsite right there. Almost a camp. Just another set of very steep Inca steps. There are many tour companies and tours to choose from. We ended up doing a bunch of research and chose the classic four day, three night expedition to Machu Picchu with the tour company Alpaca Expeditions. For those that like an extra challenge, a few tour operators do offer a three day, two night option. And for those people who aren't into sleeping on the ground but still wanna hike some of the Inca Trail, there is a two day, one night option in a hotel. The tour we booked included transportation to and from our hotel, and for the hike, it included our food and water. I can't believe this corn with the cheese. Tent, sleeping bags, hiking bowls, our special toilet tent, which will come in handy. Our tour guide, porters, and our entrance fees to Machu Picchu. It is important to research a tour company ahead of time as it is required to have a tour guide for the Inca Trail hike. This is one of the most sought after hikes in the world and the government has placed a limit on the number of people who are able to enter the trail each day to only 500 hikers. So it's really important that you plan and book your trip in advance, especially if you're going during the high tourist season. We hiked to Machu Picchu during rainy season. Was it a good idea? The Inca Trail is located in the southern hemisphere and has two major seasons, rainy season and dry season. The rainy season is from November through March. We hiked in November and while we were sad to have to hike in the rain a few times, we lucked out with lots of sunny mornings and a clear view of Machu Picchu. The high tourist season is the dry season, specifically June, July, and August. So that's when the trail will be the most crowded and the treks the most expensive. The Inca Trail was some of the best hiking we've ever done. The climate and scenery constantly changed and every single day, heck, every single hour was a new adventure. We highly recommend that if you get the opportunity to hike the trail to Machu Picchu, you do it. It's well worth it and makes it so much more rewarding when you reach Machu Picchu in the end. However, there are some things you need to know in order to be prepared. First, it's very important to have proper layers and gear. The weather changes pretty drastically. It'll be really hot one second, and then next thing you know, it'll be like freezing cold or it'll start raining. So I recommend uh, packing a lot of layers. So I had to just add uh, gloves, beanie, and a thermal underneath this jacket. And yesterday I was hiking in short sleeves with just the- I mean, this cabin. morning you were hiking in short sleeves. Yeah. We're gonna do some packing guides, specifically what we had in our pack. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. But but in short, have layers, keep them in your day pack, and always be prepared for a change. One thing to note is the highest part of the trail is 4,200 meters above sea level. And if you have not spent a lot of time at higher altitudes, we highly recommend you spend a few days in Cusco. Cusco is 3,339 meters above sea level and spending time here will let your body adjust to the higher altitudes. And to help with the effects of altitude, the locals will provide cocoa tea everywhere throughout Cusco, which I loved and found very delicious. Cocoa tea to help with altitude sickness? Is it still hot? Very hot. Steaming. And if you prefer to take medication to prevent your altitude sickness, consult with your doctor. Medications such as Diamox are available, and the last thing you want is to get altitude sickness while on the Inca Trail. 
We are exhausted. We both have s pounding headaches, or at least I do. Remember to hydrate and to stay well rested. Quick siesta and then four more hours. This will help your body to avoid altitude sickness. You're gonna wanna make sure that you prepare fitness-wise before you get there so that you're able to enjoy the experience. Cardio is obviously important, but also make sure you have strength in your legs to go up and down those stairs. We did the Stairmaster, but one thing I wish I did a little bit more of was some pistol squats or something that would help me more prepare for the downhill. All right, let's talk food, water, sleeping accommodations, and the banyo. Our tour operator, Alpaca Expeditions, provided all the food, water, and snacks we needed. Each day on the trek, we were provided with breakfast, snacks for our day, a huge lunch, a snacky hour, and dinner. There was always more than enough food. Like, we never even came close to finishing it. And Garrett still eats like a teenage boy. Thankfully, all the leftovers go to the porters, so we didn't feel bad about being wasteful. The food was delicious, and there were so many options to choose from at each meal. The porters will boil water every day for your drinking. We were able to refill our camel bags and our water bottles at breakfast, lunch, and dinner to ensure we were drinking enough water while hiking. For our sleeping accommodations, by the time we finished hiking in the evening, the porters had already set up the tents with our bags inside. Even better, they brought us water so we could wash off before dinner. Alpaca Expeditions also provided us the tent, the sleeping bag, the sleeping bag liner, and a sleeping pad with our tour package. We slept great every night. We were warm enough with the provided equipment and honestly sleeping in the rainy season, very peaceful. As for the bathroom situation, our tour included a private toilet tent, which sounds bougie, but it's essentially a composting toilet with a privacy shield around it and it was amazing. Most of the campsites had a public restroom, but after seeing them, we were very happy to have our setup. Uh, while we were hiking, we were surprised to see quite a few public restrooms along the trail. However, you will most likely have to use the great outdoors at some point during the hike. And this feels like a great place to plug my new favorite product on Amazon, the Peabody Funnel. Ladies, trust me, it will be the best $19 you have ever spent. It worked. <laughs> Let's wrap this up by talking about gratuity. We made sure to tip our porters and our tour guide. They made it all possible and they kept us fueled and well rested for every single day of the hike. If you have any questions that we didn't answer, leave a comment below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.